turn to this one. Customer says they've got no hot water. It's a Worcester Bosch combi boiler. Open the hot tap. Boiler just sat idling. Doesn't do anything. Just going to nip back to the van and get some technical information. Whip out the Breakdown Bible wet edition. Go to combi faults hot water section. Where there's a flow chart and a bit of an explanation. Right, so customer wants hot water. Customer opens a hot tap. There is water there, so we move on. Hot water turbine sensor will engage, but the boiler didn't even fire. So this is telling us it's a turbine issue. So we're gonna take down the GC number and we're gonna whip the case off. So once we've got all the case off, we're gonna whip out the Worcester Bosch book, which takes us step by step how to test the turbine. So this tells us the readings that we should be getting with the tap on and the tap off and where we're checking. So we're checking on black and yellow. If you struggle to remember which ones, just remember the song black and yellow. We're going to get the multimeter out. We're going to put it to volts DC. And now we've got to get to the actual PCB. There's black and yellow. So we're going to open the hot tap and we're going to put our probes on black and yellow. So with the tap running, we should be getting half a five, which is 2.5 but we're actually getting zero, which is showing that the turbine isn't spinning. So now we're going to whip out parts arena. We're going to type in the GC number so that we get to the right boiler. It's a 28i junior. We're going to go to hydraulics assembly. So now we're going to find it. It looks like it's number 33 to me. So then we're going to scroll down and go to number 33, which is then going to give us the part number. And then a little picture of what it looks like, which is quite handy. But I got one on the van. There's the part number again. So I'm going to isolate the cold underneath, open a hot tap to relieve the pressure. Flathead screwdriver to pop the pin out. It's a 24 mil spanner on the nut for the cold. Undo that. I pull the pump connector off as well, just to give me a bit more room. You don't have to do that though. Obviously disconnect the flow turbine connector there. Get that pin completely out of the way. Put it on the little shelf at the top. Undo the nut a bit more, so you've got plenty of freedom because you want to replace that fibre washer anyway. Don't be shy of it, get your grips on it and just pull it out. There's the turbine. When you wiggle it, you can hear that the turbine isn't very good. Right, I always replace the flow adapter as well, just for a couple of quid. Saves the customer a call back later on down the line when it leaks because we all know it will leak like i said get that fiber washer completely off plenty of lube anything with a rubber on it lube it up it's just going to make your life easier when you put it in don't forget there is an arrow on the bottom of here so make sure the arrow is pointing in towards the boiler so back in reverse assembly so flow adapter first then the turbine and then you got to wait till you just pop it in and then with that clip, put it in at an angle and then you can wiggle it till it goes down and then just lock it on with some grips. Tighten the cold inlet nut up. Reconnect the turbine adapter. Turn the cold on underneath. When you're happy, everything's tight. That water's running. Green light means go. So because we've had the case off, we've got to do our 26 nines. They're all okay, put the case back on. Open the hot tap to check one more time before I go. That's another one done, happy days.